In this video, I'll show you how to build your own Trezor hardware wallet out of a Raspberry Pi Zero. So this will behave just like the regular Trezor 1 or uh, Trezor Model T wallet. It uses the exact same software, which is open source software. And here's some of the things that you'll need. So you'll need, obviously, a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, and you'll also need the image, which I'll include a link to the description of this video. I already have mine flashed. Uh, to my micro SD card. You don't need wireless, but you do need to have the uh, header, the pins um, to it. So I'm gonna have to solder the pins in order to connect this uh, bonnet that has like a screen. This is like a screen and a couple buttons that comes, you can buy it from Adafruit. Looks like it's 128 by 64 OLED screen, uh, 1.3 inches. And so this is where we'll actually interface. These pins here need to connect to the pins on the Raspberry Pi. And mine did not come pre-soldered, so I'm gonna have to solder that on as part of the process. And so I have this header here that, uh, I think this came actually with my, uh, maybe with my case that I bought, but it'll these pins will engage into the bonnet right here and connect it to the Raspberry Pi once it's soldered on, uh, just it's soldered in here like this. You'll also need a micro SD card. I'm using a 16 gig because it's the smallest one I had, but I think you'll need a couple of gig, um, like an eight gig or even smaller would probably work. And I have a case for mine. You don't technically need a case, but I just got this case, comes with a heat sink that goes on the CPU. Probably not needed for this project, but since it comes with it, I'll put it on. It just has adhesive sticky on it to apply it to the Raspberry Pi Zero. Then the case just sort of sandwiches on here and it has four screws that hold it together with some spacers. So we'll put that uh, together like that. And that'll help protect it a little bit too, protect it from static and from some of the components that are a little more sensitive. We'll turn on the soldering iron and get ready to solder those header pins on. I've got this little holder here, so I'll put the Raspberry Pi in. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to solder. I had a bit of a difficult time soldering this on, actually. Um, I'm not sure if my temperature wasn't working right or maybe the solder I was, wasn't using very good quality solder, but uh, Anyway, I got everything soldered in here. I only show the first couple pins uh, getting soldered together. I did a short time lapse soldering on the first couple pins, and I did the rest off camera. And I really didn't do that great a job, although everything did make a good connection. Uh, and I was able to put the SD card in and uh, test it after soldering to make sure that it would boot up. And it did boot up, and uh, everything seemed to be okay. So I was happy about that. Um, sometimes if you up, use too much heat or you're not careful when soldering these, you can damage uh, the board. So fortunately that didn't happen to me. So we can move on to the next step of just uh, putting it together with the case. The case has this protective layer that I peeled off uh, and then just put the screws in and sandwich it together. I guess I'll include a link to this case as well. I believe it was like five or six dollars, a fairly inexpensive case uh, for the Raspberry Pi. It leaves the GPIO pins exposed, which is nice, and it came with that heat sink. Um, it also leaves uh, exposed the SD card. And it's a pretty good looking case regardless of what project you're doing. This bonnet just presses in here. Um, it was I had to press pretty firm. I was a little bit nervous of damaging something but I just applied some pressure there and just pushed it in. And for now, I'm gonna leave it like this. I may look for some longer screws to actually bolt it in, but just the pressure of those, or the, those pins are keeping it held together for now, uh, which is fine. So pretty good looking unit. I'm gonna pull out the SD card now and put it into my computer because since this doesn't have a network card, um, sometimes you'll, you can use Wi-Fi to set up like a headless Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, but I'm just going to put the SD card in. These are the instructions um, that I have linked as well. And then you'll put that into your computer with an adapter like this. And then we just need to go in, and I'll switch over to the screencast here. Um, we need to go into the boot partition, and we get into this pytrezor.config. And then we just need to make a few changes to this file. Um, this line here, we need to change it from 3 to 1. This line here from 0 to 1. And then this one that's pin 16 right now, we need to change that to 6. And then change this one that's pin 12, we'll change this to pin 5. And these are all in the, in the instructions as well. I'm just following the instructions, not even sure about all these configurations. But it makes it so that our screen will work. We can then uh, eject this uh, SD card, put it back in our Raspberry Pi Zero. And uh, I ejected my network partitions too on accident. 
And now we see the screen is working. It's, it's communicating through the correct pins, which is great. So then we just set this up uh, as a regular Trezor. We go to Trezor.io. Uh, we choose either one. I just chose the Trezor 0 and hit continue. And it treats this just like a Trezor wallet. So it'll go through the setup steps. Um, I clicked on create new wallet here to create a new wallet. And it will uh, tell the Raspberry Pi Zero, the Trezor device, to generate a private key. First, we have to accept the terms of service. So we go here and we see what's happening. We just hit this far right button is confirm, and the more inner button is cancel. So I'll hit this to the far right to confirm that I agree to the terms and service. Then it says uh, we need to back up our key. So and then on the computer it tells us that too because they're communicating over the USB cable. So we just go to uh, create a new key. And for this, uh, what I did, I'm not going to show you uh, my key, of course, because I actually am going to plan on using this uh, hardware wallet for to keep live funds on. But I made myself a nice little key. It's 24, uh, 24 words, the security key. So I didn't create the key. It tells, it tells me word by word on the screen. And I hit next and write them down. Then I create a pin. It shows me where to click on the screen. The, the numbers are all mixed up. Every time I plug in the device, they'll be different. This pin just lets me get access and approve um, connections on this device. And I chose to give mine a name uh, as well. You don't have to do this. I just called mine Pi Trezor. And that way I can keep this separate from my other Trezor devices because I do have other ones that I use. Oh, which is a good point. I forgot to mention, I already had Trezor Bridge installed on this computer. If you're doing this for the first time, you'll have to install Trezor Bridge. You can check out one of my other videos where I show how to do that. Uh, but that's it. So now we have the device named and it will work. We can um, get in and store all kinds of different funds. We can store Bitcoin and, and transact with Ethereum and all kinds of different uh, cryptocurrency assets and tokens. So hopefully you found this informative. That's building a uh, Trezor hardware wallet out of a Raspberry Pi Zero. Leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.